Hi, this is Creston with the Colorado Avalanche Information Center. I'm out here today just west of Montezuma on an east-facing slope around 12,300 feet. But what I'm looking for today are new persistent weak layers buried and preserved in the snowpack. We had a big warm-up before last week's storm, and it put a lot of crusts out in a lot of different terrain, a lot of different aspects. These crusts are now buried and have faceted above and below. And up here on this terrain, uh, which is a big kind of open alpine piece of terrain, I found a real subtle little crust buried in the snowpack underneath uh, this last week's slab that was formed. Um, when I did an ECT, uh, I had an ECT in, so it failed on this layer but did not propagate the column. Um, but my concern is that in other terrain, maybe with a bigger slab on top, that this crust facet combination in here could easily fail and create an avalanche. The second concern is there was a remotely triggered avalanche uh, a little further up the valley that I can see from here that was reported yesterday that failed to the ground. And one of the big things is we still have a bunch of weak, grainy, sugary snow at the bottom of our snowpack. It started to slowly heal, but has certainly not gone away for the season. Uh, so a likely scenario is that you could easily trigger or more easily trigger an avalanche in this upper uh, kind of crust facet or weak layer slab combination that generates enough mass that we get a failure down low at the bottom of the snowpack making a really big avalanche. So looking around terrain today, I see a bunch of recently wind drifted slopes, big smooth drifts. Um, these are all the type of features that I would definitely steer clear of. Um, Big rocky terrain, anything with a lot of trigger points, these are all likely places that you're gonna trigger or potentially still trigger a big avalanche um, and do yourself some serious harm. So for the time being, keep it mellow, keep it safe, and enjoy the good spring weather.